What's up guys, thanks for checking out the video. In today's DIY video, I'm gonna be removing the lower engine mount nuts and the clutch fork shaft. It's on a 2005 WRX engine and tranny. I'm actually removing it from a 1998 two-door coupe. Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Luke, this is a Subaru only show. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. Here's the headers, here's the oil pan, here's the front sway bar. Next is that clutch fork shaft. Throw it on a ratchet and you're good to go. Put those a little closer for you guys to see. Like that, boom. And that's our clutch fork shaft. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. This video is actually a video in a build series where I'm removing a 2005 WRX engine from my 1998 two-door coupe. Behind me on this whiteboard, I have a list of 16 steps that I've been walking through in this build series. We've made our way down to step 11 in step 12, removing those engine mount nuts and removing that clutch fork shaft. If you've never removed one of these clutch fork shafts, this will be a really good video to check out. It might seem confusing at first, but it's actually a pretty straightforward process and I'll walk you guys through it right now. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm here in Northern California. This is my little Subaru only shop. And I basically got a lot of Subarus. I'm constantly doing Subaru builds. And that's what this channel is all about. It's a DIY Subaru channel to walk you guys through how to maintain your Subarus and how to upgrade your Subarus so you can use them as daily drivers or so you can use them in motorsport events like me. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. All right, let's get to these engine mount nuts and this clutch fork shaft. Okay, let's head underneath this car and let's take a closer look at those engine mount nuts. All right. We're underneath the car. Here's the headers, here's the oil pan, here's the front sway bar, and here's actually a front cross member. The nuts for those lower engine mounts are actually located up underneath this cross member. Let me show you guys what I mean. Okay, here are those engine mount nuts. They're gonna be 14 millimeters. So get a half inch socket and a ratchet and remove both of those nuts. There'll be one on each side, the driver's side and the passenger side. All right, and there's a nut from the driver's side. Now move over to the passenger side and remove that nut, and we'll have these lower engine mounts completely unbolted from the front subframe. All right, and we're on the passenger side now. Go ahead and use that 14 millimeter socket and ratchet and remove that lower engine mount nut. Okay, and there's a second nut. Both lower engine mount nuts are off, and we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so next is that clutch fork shaft. I'm gonna show you guys how you get that sucker out right now. So basically, go over to your engine bay, Okay, now we're here on the driver's side. You kind of go down on the driver's side. It's gonna be right on the side of the transmission. And here's where that shaft is located. It's right here on the driver's side, right below where the starter was. And the first thing we need to do is remove this access plug. This is a 10 millimeter Allen fitting. So throw that in your socket with a short extension and pull this plug out. Okay, we're here in my shop and these are actually all the tools you're gonna to need to remove that plug and that clutch fork shaft. The first tool is a 10 millimeter Allen fitting but it actually works easier if you use a short extension. So grab yourself one of these short three inch extensions. Put that 10 millimeter Allen on that short extension and then throw it on a ratchet and you're good to go. All right, let's take the sucker outside. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's actually raining out here a little bit. But that's not gonna stop me. That's why I'm all bundled up. It's also great that it's raining because there's a bunch of wildfires right now in California. And I'm here in Northern California and we needed this rain to put these fires out. So thank God it's raining. Okay, get that socket in there. <laughs> Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Let's see if I can get this sucker out. Ah. All right, there we go. And it's really starting to come down. I'm like <laughs> getting drenched right now. All right, go ahead and put that socket in. I mean that Allen fitting and loosen that plug and take it all the way out. Okay, boom, got that plug out. Now we'll move on to the next step. Now that we have that plug out, we actually have access to that rod, but before we do that, we actually need to remove the tension on that clutch fork shaft. And to do that, we actually need to unbolt that slave cylinder. And that's these two bolts down here. Remove these two bolts. That way the slave cylinder stops applying tension to this fork shaft because we need that clutch fork to be loose so that it doesn't put a bunch of friction on that rod and we can slide that rod out. So that's the next step, remove these two bolts. All right, and for those two bolts, we'll actually use a 14 millimeter socket and a short extension. Put that in your ratchet and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get these suckers out of here. The rain's actually lightening up a little bit now. 
So I'm not going to get soaked. All right, move these two bolts. All right, there's the first bolt. And there's the second one. Now that both these bolts are out, you can remove this slave cylinder like that. Put that sucker aside. Okay, now we've relieved the hydraulic tension on that clutch fork, but you still want to remove that spring. That's the spring tension that's still being applied. Okay, now that clutch fork is totally free. I'll go ahead and remove this boot also. Okay, now your clutch fork is totally free. We can go ahead and move down to this lower access port and screw a bolt into that shaft and slide that shaft out from that bore. Okay, now we need to grab a bolt and screw that bolt into that rod. I have a couple different sizes here. This one's about two inches and this one's about an inch and a half. I'm gonna grab the smaller one. And I'm gonna show you guys how you screw that into the bore and I use a pair of pliers as leverage to pull that rod out. Let me show you guys right now. I believe these are six millimeters. Okay, so go ahead and put that right in the center of the bore and find where the hole is. There's gonna be a hole in the middle of that rod that you have access to now that you remove that plug. So once I'm in the center of the bore, I'm gonna zoom in a little closer for you guys to see. Just screw it in. And I like screw it all the way in. See, so you have lots of bite on all those threads. And that's what it looks like panning back. You have a clutch fork shaft right here. We have the hole where the starter will go in. And then we've got that bolt screwed into the center of that shaft. Okay, next grab yourself a pair of vice grips. Make sure you have enough of the body of the bolt exposed so you can get the vice grips around it and have it right up against the head of that bolt. Okay, once you got your vice grips in a good position, you can go ahead and use the vice grips to put some leverage on that bolt and slowly work that shaft out. Like that, boom. Once you get it started, you should be able to pull it out by hand. As you can see, that shaft is halfway out. I'm gonna zoom in the top and see if I can give you guys a little bit of a view of what it looks like through the top here too. Okay, we're looking straight down the top where that clutch fork shaft is. And hopefully you can see as I'm pulling this shaft, you can kind of see it coming out from the top angle. And we'll go ahead and pull it on out. Bam. And that's our clutch fork shaft. Now that we have it out, you have a better angle to see how that bolt screws into the end of that rod. Okay, let's take this sucker in. Let's put it down with the rest of the parts in the shop. Okay, so that's our clutch fork shaft. There's a transmission plug that gives us access to that shaft. I'll go ahead and put these suckers right down here. The rest of the parts of this build. Sweet. And this means we get to knock a couple more steps off the list. Step 11, engine mount cross member nuts. That was really easy. And step 12, clutch release fork shaft. Done. Awesome. Since my transmission is a manual transmission, I don't have any torque converter bolts, so I'm gonna knock this one off the list as well. But just in case you guys have an automatic transmission, I'm gonna walk over to the car and show you exactly where you remove these torque converter bolts from. And it's raining again. Okay, we're here on the engine, we're on the outside. And if we move over here, over to the passenger side, you're gonna see there's a little access port right here, right? on the back of the engine on the passenger side. This little access port will actually have a little plastic cap or plug over it that you can pry off with a flat blade screwdriver and pull that plastic plug out. And through this access port, you can actually gain access to the bolts that bolt your flywheel to your torque converter when you have an automatic transmission. And so what you'll do is you'll slowly rotate your engine over until one of the bolts lines up with this port. And then once that bolt lines up, you'll put a socket with a ratchet and you'll take that bolt all the way out. And then rotate the engine another 90 degrees and take the second one out and then rotate it again, another 90 degrees, and take all four of those bolts out. That's how you remove the torque converter bolts when you have an automatic transmission. It's really quite easy to do. You just need to do it one step at a time. And it's a hell of a lot easier to remove those bolts. That way the torque converter stays in your automatic transmission because if you try to remove that torque converter when it's bolted up to the engine, it's gonna spill all kinds of transmission fluid all over the place. So I highly recommend you pull those torque converter bolts out. I had to wrap it up there for today, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the video. In this video, we removed those lower engine mount nuts and we removed the clutch fork shaft. It's a pretty straightforward process, but if you've never done it before, it's definitely worth taking a look at this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you thought it provided some value. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section. I'm Luke, this is the Subaru Only Show. Until next time, guys, later.